ChatGPT is great. So great that it can create entire web applications in seconds. Today, I'm gonna to be using Codex, OpenAI's AI coding tool that works within VS Code to help me build this bookmark manager app. If you're new here, hi, my name is Zoe. I'm a software engineer who loves teaching folks how to code. If you're interested in learning what it takes to start a career in front end development, click that first link in the description below. But without further ado, let's hop into the video. All right, so the design that we're gonna be using today is from Front End Mentor. I'll leave a link to Front End Mentor in the description below if you're interested in following along. Um, they have both paid and free plans, so some of these designs that I'll do are paid, some of them are free. I believe this is a paid design. So the project is to build a bookmark manager app um, with add, edit, archive, search, and filter features, um, basically allowing you to use it fully. Um, so look, taking a look at the design, it has a list of all your bookmarks and then you can reorganize them and categorize them and then they have different um, versions for mobile and tablet uh, looks pretty straightforward but it is a level four so it's an advanced project um, so let's see how hard it is to build this out what i did to start is i actually went ahead and i started up a next.js app um, that i'm going to use as the base for the project and then we're going to go ahead and use codex to integrate and add in all the information that we need the other thing that I went ahead and did was I downloaded the files that we're going to need, um, the data and all that kind of information so that we have everything that we need to get started. So let's go ahead and pull that up and add that to our project folder. All right, so I've gone ahead and added a couple of files to this project. So I've added um, the data.json file, which basically has all of that information that we're gonna be using. I've gone ahead and added the images that were from the um, front end mentor assets that we were provided. So all of the different logos that we're gonna need to access, I've added that to the public folder. And I've also gone ahead and added a link to the Figma file. Now we're not gonna be able to read it in VS Code, but I wanna give Codex access, potentially, I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but just added that to make sure that it's there. So, um, I already have the app up and running. It's just a regular old Next.js app with TypeScript. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do, because I wanna be able to modify this project in the future fairly easily, um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can ask Codex to install Material UI and use that as our styling for the project. So um, it says, ask it to do anything. I said, um, uh, can you install um, MUI in this project? I'd like to use that or styling. All right, let's see what it says. So it's thinking about it. Okay, it's installing it. It's thinking some more. Okay, now it's asking me if it's allowed to run this. Um, yes, install those, that looks good. All right, so it's gonna install that. Now I notice it didn't install the Next.js package. I'm not sure if that's required. Um, it is in the documentation. So let's see what happens. Maybe it'll work just fine. I've been unnecessarily installing it. Okay, so it's gone ahead and installed Material UI, React, Emotion Styles. Um, next step, import MUI components theme. Consider wrapping app. Um, okay, so it's, it's giving me the next steps. Um, can you complete those next steps? And it's moving pretty quickly. Um, yeah, let's approve. Now there is the option to approve things for the session. Um, I don't know if I have that much trust in it yet to just let it sort of run willy nilly, uh, but uh, approving each command for me is not that taxing. So let's see what happens. Okay, awesome. So it looks like it's done everything that needs to be done. It's added it um, in the, the layout file. And uh, let's take a look at the app folder itself. Um, it's created a providers. Okay, and this is like not strictly necessary. Like you could do this right within the page file um, or the layout file, sorry. But um, it did do a whole separate providers piece as well, which um, does allow for certain um, optimization. So I guess that's good that it did that. All right, so looking here, let me refresh and see if we have that issue. All right, so yeah, it looks like it's working pretty well. Nothing's broken so far, at least. Um, so next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna point it towards the Figma file and see if it can go ahead and spin up the first version. Um, so looking, where is it? It's the, it's in the design folder. So let's see how it would. Add 
add context. Let's look for the dot fig. Perfect. So I'm going to ask it using this design file and movie, create this web, this bookmark manager app. Um, the data is provided in data.json. So using the, let's say, I'm going to attach another file to let me, using the Figma design file and MUI, uh, let's type in data.json, um, create this bookmark manager app. Okay, so let's send it to that and see how well it handles it. Um, let's see if, if it works. Okay. I can read the data just fine, but I don't have a way. Could you share the key details? All right, so it's not able to read it. Um, it's not able to, to sort of interact with all of that. Okay, so that's good to know. All right, so looking at the, let me ask it now to look at the design folder. And I'll say using the image, using preview.jpg, um, can you use preview? jpg instead that's the essence of the design I'll send that there and we'll see that we've used about four percent of the tokens now this is a paid version of chat gpt so um, there is that as well but let's see let's see how much this eats up all right so it's working with the preview image seems to be going all right oh yeah and i did upload all of those other image files in the public folder not sure if any of them show the like uh different different um you know mobile tablet desktop designs but it seems to be thinking at least the main thing with these these AI coding agents is really the time, you know, like how much time does it take for this to actually, um, you know, build this thing out. Um, but yeah, it's really like, is this worth the time that it's taking to build this out? Probably is because honestly, it's going to take me about 10 times longer to build it, but only if it's working, right? All right, so it took about five minutes, but it has spun up something. So let's take a look at what it's given us back. Um, so it's wired page, built the manager, style the book cart, okay, okay, bookmark, applied the custom theme. Next steps, hook the add bookmark button, decides so you want to persist. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual code and see what it's done here. So looking in the app folder, it's gone ahead and built a component folder, which I really like, because that's something I personally do a lot. Um, taking a look at the main page, it's just created a bookmark manager and used that. And so it's gone ahead and imported the raw data from data.json and passed that to the bookmark data. And it's done, it's typed everything, which is really awesome. Um, the layout folder hasn't made too many additional changes since then, so we'll leave that. Um, but it has updated the metadata, which is cool. Um, and then it did a bit of the colors in the global CSS folder, I guess file, because it needs to you know, access the body and the background and things like that. Looking into the components, it only has two components. Um, so we have the bookmark manager, ooh, which has some errors. All right, let's go ahead and see what we have here. Um, okay, so it's using memo, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and see what's causing these errors to start with. So it says grid. Oh, you know what? This might be that it's using an old version of um, Material UI. Like the version that it understands doesn't understand how to use grid because that has happened before when I've tried to use this. Um, so it's, this, this component seems fine though. So that, that, that's good. Um, and so then I'm assuming if I go over to the bookmark manager, actually, no, it works. Um, so maybe it's not some, it's a, not a breaking change, but wow, this is crazy already. Um, I guess it is a breaking change because it's not putting it in a grid. Uh, but other than that, it seems to be working quite well. Um, wow, that's amazing. So we have, 
Okay, so right now doing more actions does nothing. Opening the bookmark actually does work, which is great. Um, awesome. And then I can go ahead and sort by tags. Okay, so all in all, it's working pretty well. Like it's actually not doing too badly. Um, so let's see what questions it had asked us here in Codex. So it says, um, hook in the ad bookmark button into the dialogue and then decide how we want to persist dialogue. Um, to persist bookmark guidance. I'm gonna ask it to do um, to fix the grid first. So first, first, can you fix the grid element in at bookmark manager? Let's see. And right now, you'll see it's actually used about 10% of our tokens just to build this one page. So. You know, it's a little bit expensive to be doing every single day, every single time. Um, but it, you know, it did build us a fully working web app, so that's pretty cool. Um, so let's see if we can fix that, and if we can hook into the other functionality, and then we can say, you know, this actually was a worthwhile investment of time and resources. Okay, so it's gone ahead and swapped out the grid component. Um, I'm still seeing one error though, so let's see what that error is. Um, ah, we don't actually have that module available. So, is it that it doesn't exist? Or, well, it must not exist, right? Um, so I'm getting this error. Let me pass in the error to it. Mm, no, okay. So it really, I don't think it's gonna be able to handle using this grid component. And this is an issue I've run into in my past ChatGPT test video. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna say, um, for in, in this component, in Bookmark Manager, don't use any type of grid component from MUI, um, uh, create it by hand, um, create it manually using a diff because the computer doesn't have hands. Um, but create it, not even, I guess manually is even the right, right, wrong word, right? Create it just using a diff automatically. Um, compute it or whatever it actually does. Okay, so it's fixed that up pretty quick. Um, awesome. I'm not seeing any errors here, which is great. And the grid is working, fantastic. So we have, wow, hover states, like everything is just working really well. Um, the links actually work because we provided it with the data. Um, the only thing I don't have, I guess maybe we haven't also provided a design for this, but is the more actions. Um, and then of course it mentioned that the ad bookmark doesn't necessarily work. Um, so let's go ahead and ask it to um, hook up hook up add bookmark and um, create a modal for that. Um, also create um, a popover for when the user clicks on more actions in the bookmark card. All right, cool. Let's see how long that takes. So, so far we've gone, it's taken us about 10 minutes-ish to get to this point. So let's see. All right, so a couple more minutes. That took about four more minutes, but we've got an answer here. Um, so it says it's introduced an add bookmark dialogue, um, refactored the manager. All right, so now it's asking if you want to persist and do things like that. So let me go ahead and take a look at the files. All right, so it's just added this one file. Um, and okay, so it's not actually using these methods. So it's... What's the issue here? Props with the serial line. Mm, okay. Okay, so that's just the next JS issue. Okay, so looking pretty good so far, minus the issue. Um, if we add the bookmark, wow, that's awesome. It really adds us, allows us to add, um, so let's say new bookmark. Um, let's say Google. Google. 
it'll say HTTPS Google doc, oops, google.com. And we'll just, uh, we'll give it, we'll just save it like that. And let's see if we can find it. Awesome, so yeah, it's there. And when I click, it works, fantastic. Um, so that that's really cool. So we added it to add a bookmark and what else do we ask it to do? We added to add a bookmark and then oh, yeah, the click over for the, the popover. So when you click more actions, awesome, you can now unpin archive or delete it. So let me go down to my Google one. And let's see if I can go ahead and delete it. Perfect. And react dots. Let me go see if I can archive it worked. And then in the archive now we have three um, here, it even allows us to unarchive it. So I think this is a really powerful tool that we have here. Now, granted, it did use, um, what were we at, 4% we started? It used about 16% of our tokens just for this one task. Um, so I don't know if this is a realistic thing that you'd want to use for every single thing that you're doing, you know, every single task um, for projects. Also, as an engineer, you're now not actually learning how to build what's going on here. And then you do run into issues like this, like, you know, the on close, on submit, um, you know, it's not a function that's a server action, et cetera. Like you do run into these errors that now you need to go back and debug and fix. Um, and we're getting the same issues here. Um, you know, and then also is the logic good, right? So handle, like if we just go through the logic here and we're look, taking a look at it, it says, so um, if I look at the bookmark manager, so going from the top to the bottom, bookmark manager, we have all these different components and pieces that we've added in. It says generate random bookmark ID, return crypto dot random UUID. And crypto comes from okay, I'm not quite sure where it's getting crypto from, but anyway, um, it's doing that. Um, some of these are useful, like normalizing the tag that just brings it to, to lowercase, um, sorting. That's great. Um, what else? Active bookmarks. So it's using memo to filter them. Archive bookmarks, current collection, tag counts, um, you know, I'd say this is, the code is fine. It's a bit cluttered, you know, um, in terms of like, it's just a lot of logic, right? Like there are like a couple hundred lines of logic just in this one file before we actually get to just the, the outer container. Um, right now in the cards itself, we're just talking about the, um, the like outside information here. So, like the sidebar and things like that um, and the, like the general logic. So I think it, it works. It is just a bit long though. Like if I were to go ahead and code this myself, I would not make a almost 600 uh, line file. Um, I would ideally break it up into smaller pieces and you know, that would be my first move. And then even this, the bookmark card is nearly 300 lines of code, which again is, you know, sort of making it a little, it's it's more complex, I think, than it probably needs to be, um, but it does involve, you know, full functionality. So I think we do run into that same trap of like, the AI agent is gonna use as many tokens as it wants to use in order to build something that's really, really like, fully featured, you know, uh, does everything sort of thing. And to be fair, we did provide a design that probably asked for a lot of this stuff. Um, but at, at the same time, it's going to really eat through your credits. You know, it's really gonna just take up a lot of that um, that space that you have, all those tokens that you have. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you wanna see more content like this, feel free to subscribe down below. And if you wanna see how the free version of ChatGBT handles building a to-do app, click here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.